And Peek, just random thought about her. I, I, I always thought like, man, this girl reminds me of someone. I don't know who, right? Because you, you can't think of any girls that crawl on their arms and legs and just walk around like a cockroach in your household. But <laughs> she reminds me of the girl from The Ring. You know, the one that crawls out of the well? Yeah. <laughs> oh my the God. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sato. That's why I never trusted her. Like, watch. She's going to show up on the next episode and be like, seven days. <laughs> <laughs> girl, what's up? Get out of here. You didn't oh, pay your bills. <laughs> Somebody throw a bucket of water on this girl and get that janitor from the last episode. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> watch, watch that film That's here. a teeth cut. Dang, man. Bro. Sasha, this is why it's hard to listen to what you say sometimes. Sir. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, man. Hey, man. I got you, bro. Strokes of Baseball. brilliance. Strokes of brilliance. Welcome to a Society of Sundays, even though it's not Sunday today. <laughs> this show will be discussing the final season of Attack on Titan. I'm your host, David, and joining today, we have so Taylor. Hello! Next up, we have Justin. Hey, guys. Next up, we have Ku. Yo, yo. Next up, we have Sasha. Sheen's a wall. And finally, we have Brian. Sasage, yo. Right. And also, ah, guest appearances, uh, appearances by Stratton. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do a two parter today because you know uh, last last week's episode was late, so I cover both. I forgot what number is like 73, 74, but the last two episodes yep. that was airing. So let's go to the first one. Uh, sorry, I write with 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 uh was uh Aaron and Vicasa and Gabby in the table, and just. <laughs> I don't know. I just a nice little reunion of sorts. Yeah. Some would say. Nice. Actually, the very first. Actually, I want to ask Taylor this because when when Aaron was beating up, beating up Armin, how how did that make you feel? So sad. Why? How else would I feel? I don't know. I just imagine all the Armin he, fans. He deserved it. I remember all, all the Armin fans just like getting devastated. I'm just watching this. I'm just laughing so hard. I'm like, get fucked. What? You were <laughs> laughing and getting beaten up? Yes. That's so twisted, David. Like, I was, <laughs> all I thought I was like, Aaron has a good reason for it. He's just being a dick. All I thought was like, what? Get get fucked, Armin fans. <laughs> Sasha, so. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I just, it makes me sad. <laughs> My my favorite part though is during that whole conversation, when you know Armin's feeling like, "What's happening, with my boy? What's going on here?" And he's like, "Come on, Aaron." And Aaron's like, "Bro, I know you. You've been looking at Andy. <laughs> Did you see that look of realization hit his eyes? He's like, "I got you. I got you. I know you got Bertholdt's memories, boy." And this goes back to the episode when Aaron first comes back to the island with them. And remember that the shooting range or whatever it was? And he asks Armin right there. He asks his boy. He's like, yo, man, be real with me. Be real with me. You've been thinking about Annie? You having Bert Holtz memories? And he's like, oh, no, not at all. So, you know, I thought the beating was deserved for, for those lies. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Oh, Lord. Wow. <laughs> I can't say I agree with that assessment. It makes me sad. But what, Sasha, I would like to ask you a question. What were your thoughts on what Aaron had to say for Mikasa? Hey, hey, you know, as as a diehard Jaegerista, I I gotta say, Mikasa, you dead to me, girl. You dead to me. Damn, there it is. Wow. Hey, wow. There it is. hey she was so loyal. I'm, I'm sorry. Protect him from Armin. Yeah, but she's loyal for the wrong reasons. I didn't realize it was literally. You know, a blood oath that she has to follow, and when he says certain words, it activates chemicals in her brain that make her act a certain way. So, all this time, I thought it was her free will, and now that you find out she's a gold digger because she wants to get close to the royal family. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I wouldn't no, no, call no, no, her no. gold digger. Do you know what gold uh, digger means, sir? <laughs> I know, dude. In this case, she wants that founding Titan blood. You know, she wants no, to be no, part no, of that no, royal no. family. She so, had uh, no idea. I can't believe how quickly you would turn on Mikasa. You made a whole video about her. Listen, and now listen. you're just turning your back. That was seasons one through three, Mikasa. That <laughs> the back that will be in. You know, what? I'm yep. with you on that one. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Thank you, Coop. You know, Taylor, as as uh, 
Abraham Lincoln once said, a man has a right to change his mind. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go Ooh, with that. Facts. Facts. All right. So Aaron hates Mikasa and Armin, I guess. That's uh, how we opened up. Dude, in the bigger On a day serious was, note, uh, though. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sash. I think he's doing this on purpose. Um, and to bring it back to the context of everything that's happened, obviously, we, we, we found out his plan. And Zeke's plan as well. We'll get to Zeke a little bit later. But I think he's doing this to distance himself from them because he doesn't want to see them go. But he knows the cost of peace in the future is the death of the Eldian people. And so what better way to, uh, you know, release the pain of losing the ones you love than to do it yourself? Shout out. Well, I was going to wait till later. I said, but do you really think that uh, Aaron gotta go along with the alien euthanasia plan you don't think he's just using zeke hmm that's a good question because he didn't seem all too convinced to go along with zeke and i still don't like zeke even though we had a pretty crazy backstory <laughs> yeah, well, for him yeah that's 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 we'll get to that later but, but um yeah but to answer your question you know i didn't even think about that i, I, I don't know aaron just seems so far gone that i think everybody go and uh, die <laughs> i just think that like <laughs> I don't know. I I think that Zeke's plan is so it's so out there that like I don't believe that Aaron would fully follow it. I think he's just he he's just like just lying to Zeke just so he can go on with his his own agenda. So you know, I remember when I was first reading this and I was learning about Zeke's plan, and I remember and I I hated him so much. I didn't want to listen to a damn word that came out of that guy's mouth, but. I listened to the plan and I was like, yeah, this kind of checks out. I was like, why? Because like, it's not like they're actually, unless I severely misunderstood something, it's not like they're actually going to hurt anybody or kill anybody if they went with that plan. It's literally just making it so they can't have kids anymore. Whoa. whoa so it'd just whoa. be the last of them. But that's kind of that's kind of just restricting someone's free will, right? Like, yeah, if you don't want kids, you yeah. know, that doesn't really bother you that much, but if you wanted, you know, to have children and have someone carry on your legacy, right? It mm -hmm. totally yeah. fucks with you. So that's oh, yeah, I'm not, even, I'm not even taking it from that perspective, though. Like, I, I know that's a whole other thing. But just mm -hmm. in terms of, like, avoiding, I guess, bloodshed and, like, you know, the people that are around you right now that you love, that you've grown up with, like, it's not like mm -hmm. anything has to happen to them, right? I feel like that is a f somewhat, if it, it's going to come to war, I feel like it's a decent trade-off. And just go that route. Uh, I don't know. I thought there was at least something interesting there, it but just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just. It just feels like <laughs> such an extreme alternative. Like, I mean, like and so, war. So for me, it's like so their euthanasia plan is just to a plan to get rid of all the titans. Yeah. Well, it's because uh, Eldians. No, Eldians. Oh, no, just just a race in general. Just just yeah, a right. race of Eldians, so the titans will still exist. No, no, because they're like, ending, the, blood, they're ending Eldian, the racial bloodline. Yeah, yeah. Eldians are the only ones that can turn to Titans. So you have to get rid of all the Eldians to get rid of all the Titans. Sure, go for it. Yeah. But I mean, to your point, though, it's <laughs> okay. like if, if Aaron's whole spiel is, you know... I a lot of thought into that. <laughs> oh, Lord. I mean, it's like... Yo, Brian. <laughs> Jaegerista for life, bro. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i can't believe you guys horrible just horrible. well listen let, let's think about this you're on shark tank you know you got a billion dollar valuation and they always bring you down from that and they're like well let's poke holes into your logic same thing here if you're the eldians you know you're basically put into internment camps you are served as uh warriors that your only purpose is to serve someone's army um you're the people that you look up to, the quote unquote Marlians, they see you as devils. They hate you. They put water on you when you go to see a nice view in the city. I mean, it's just, it, it's, a, it's a tough life. If you're telling me, listen, either life stays that way and you're disgraced for the next 600 years or whatever it is, but mm -hmm. you can have kids and sometimes you can turn into a deformed beast that's three meters tall. Or, listen, down the road, you're going to die. You can't have kids, but you can live life just as cool as anybody else. I think I might take that latter deal. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, you know uh, what? Nah, man, uh, fuck that. Where's the freedom uh, in that? If I'm well, Aaron I, and I want to be free, that's restricting I don't know if freedom you still, at the core right there. I don't know if well, you yeah, can but... assume that like you would still have like you you get like your freedom back after knowing that you can't have kids. Like I think you'd still get discriminated in this society. So, 
Nah, man. Nah. But I, it I just put seems that in like a compromise that doesn't make sense for Aaron. Aaron is not one who compromises. Yeah, I agree right. with Dustin on that. I don't think Aaron would would really be thinking that way. But like, in terms of, um, actually, never mind. Never mind. Drop that thought. I'll <laughs> say it that like, and also you look at like you look at Flock and his group and all the uh, the Jaegerdis, like they're respect. Uh, they're like that's it on revolution, and they think they think they're fighting for their freedom. They don't know anything about these euthanasia plans. So, like you, they would not be like this passionate if they knew like that was the thing they were fighting for. So they might be. Uh, I don't know the about that. Probably Flock, would be. It's probably 50 50, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I Flock think it's more so just like the enticement of like something different because that's like the whole point of Flock saying, like, with uh, Keith shot as the one the older commander. He's like, look how old they are and set in their ways of wanting to, you know, do nothing but continue to fight like a battle that isn't really going to get us what we want at the end of the day. So. I will give Flock a lot of credit, like during that whole kind of like rally of joining over to their side, like it makes makes a lot of sense. And I could see why, you know, these cadets that are kind of just stuck in this like proverbial loop of, you know, old men's thinking and training, like, of course, they probably want to jump at something new and exciting. Was it really necessary to beat the crap out of Shottis, though? I thought that was really like. Yes, and you got to well, see that's, the message. See, now that's where, yeah, that's where Flock now, you know, he loses some points. He had good points of rallying, whoa, and then when he's whoa, just like, whoa, yo, whoa, man, man, let's be beat the shit out of this guy. Like, show me you're really down for the cause. Like, blood for blood, you feel me? And I'm just like, oh, man. Like, I think that's pretty okay. messed up. I, I feel like for me, when like, that really shows his actual character. Like, he might yeah. have some ideals he's fighting for, but under, under, underneath all of that, he's just a nasty, spiteful little punk. Wow, I will say it is pretty funny though to see Shadis be like, "Oh no, nah, man! Like they ain't gonna beat me up. These are my these are my homies. Like I've been training them." And then it just you know pans to the next scene and he's just crippled on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, ah, I, I trusted you. Rough times, I know, man. That's rough times. One time, I left some grapes out and I was like, "Yo, Shred, man, you can have a couple." Came back, the whole plate was gone. So right, that's my I know how Shadis feels. Um, they really be the ones you think are closest to, huh? It'd be your own uh, I know. Homies, dude. The first cut is the deepest. <laughs> the words of <laughs> Shania Twain or whatever her name was. <laughs> the, the, the correlation there is un, it's uncanny, sir. Uh, uncanny. Wow. I see it. Yep. I see it too. I feel it. Mm, okay. All right. All right. So the, the discussion, any, any further points about the discussion? Because we all know the next part of the episode was where it really took matters. Uh, you mean into Levi? More. Our boys, Levi and Zeke. Dude, that was. I only. I I feel so bad for Levi, man. Like, just yeah. Again, has to kill his comrades because this because this douchebag Zeke is like just always like I don't. Know. Yeah, I know. Well, even more it's so, really it's like bad. with you know the scene where they showed that his, Levi's soldiers, you know, wanted to bring this wine because you know they had never really had something of this kind of like high class, and Levi's kind of like. You know, hesitant of like, no, 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 you don't need wine. Like, we do tea around here, like teas to go. And they're just like, please, just this yeah. one time, like, Captain, please. And then Le yeah, Levi's Levi. like, all right, I'll do the one time for the one time. And then he gets absolutely fucked. <sighs> yep, I blame Levi. He should have stayed headstrong and said, no. He's like, you you don't that drink black wine. Earl Grey drink, motherfuckers. Tea. Yeah, we don't change shit around here. <laughs> he, ha he can't be responsible for everyone all the time. Poor guy deserves a break. Oh, so sad. That's what he signed up for, okay? <laughs> yep. I After will Captain say, though, I do... Actually, he got kind of coerced into sign. Wait, I don't know about you guys know, though. You've never really watched the OVAs, have you all? Nope. I did. I, I've watched, I watched the OVAs. OVAs. Yeah. Okay. He kind of got coerced into it a little bit. But anyways. Yeah. Um... I, I think, if anything, for me, I really enjoyed the part where... Um, Zeke and Levi are sitting down, and Zeke's just like, so, how's that book? And he's like... Oh, you know, it's really great after the seven times I've read it, you know, being out here for a month with nothing fucking to do. Just like the continued dynamic of you. Obviously, both these characters just have nothing but absolute hate for each other. And just, you know, the idle chit chat that they continue to make is, is really great. Yo, but what I loved even more <laughs> was when Zeke just started running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the one Levi's face is like, he's like, what the, like, what the fuck? Like, like, this are you for serious? Real? Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's really like, here. Oh man, like, man, that that, that part just cracked me up. <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> one nitpick about that scene, though. One nitpick is okay. I know Levi 
is a straight up gangster, a killer. And this man, he takes down Titans like no other. When you got 30 of those dudes and they can climb up trees. And okay, so it like it like cuts to a shot of Zeke being carried by the Titans. And he looks uh-huh. obviously worried, but he's like, I told you, Levi, how are you gonna deal with killing your own people? And then it pans to Levi. Levi's in midair and he's you know picturing all his comrades and their faces. And then he, he knows, he realizes he has to cut all of them down. But literally like two seconds later, he shows up and he's caught up to Zeke. I like, I get it, but that part rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. Cause I'm like, bruh, in the past, that has been so much trouble to just even kill just a few of them. And then to catch up with Zeke, who is obviously being carried by some speedy Titans. It looks like that yeah. part I thought was a little bit too much of a, you know, movie magic, if you will. But that's my minor nitpick for that scene. Yeah. If it wasn't Levi, Fair. I wouldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it had to be the world's strongest soldier. Yeah. Well, I guess you could say our humanity. Um, and like, remember that time during season three too, when he ha- it was I think him that hatched. No, it was Erwin who hatched the plan for him to go and like cut down all those titans in formation around Shiganshina and to like get to zeke uh i think that was actually erwin's plan now that i'm looking back on it but like he managed to do that and that was pretty like impressive doing that without getting caught you had to do he had to be really fast doing that as well granted they were all standing still i don't know i kind of i kind of agree with you but not too much it's fine that's a fair point i just feel like seeing them climb up the trees and go all crazy i was like dude these guys got advanced and then he just cuts them down the same amount of time yeah he even mentioned himself he's like why the hell are they so fast like you know they're a different type of titan than Mm -hmm. what's kind of been the norm you know 30 of if it was like four of them okay i got got you i could see levi doing that but 30 of them just all surrounding him in the trees i mean it is what it is I mean, it wasn't confirmed that he killed all 30 either, right? Maybe he just killed enough to get away and chase after Zeke? Eh, you know, at this point... I mean, it could be, we, we, we don't see, you know? It's right. exactly like Sasha said, know. it just cuts to him catching up with, with Zeke and them and being like, surprise, motherfucker! And then <laughs> Zeke is being like, god damn it. Are you kidding me again? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. why are you always doing this? I just want to give a <laughs> shout out to throw back to the running tank titan animation especially the oh, guy man. on the right the side of like titan <laughs> yeah he's just swinging his arms back and forth <laughs> I, it's like, hey man some some people run like that sh- bro i don't know this show's been so focused on like marley for so long that i forgot <laughs> about how dumb or just how weird the titan there's run. a lot of great titan animations back <laughs> through all the seasons so mm. and it also yeah. just like just how brutal zeke is just like taking the other titan just like ripping all of her limbs apart just so he can like slow down uh levi <laughs> like when he was ripping that titan in half like jesus yeah from yeah. the leg from the legs up baby yeah that's how you do it yeah, that was that was something <laughs> no so comment um but, <laughs> but yeah so then that happened and then um was there a closing scene at the end of that episode it was I think basically. It, it was when uh, Zeke, Zeke woke get, up in the back of the yeah. cart. And oh then yeah, yeah, yeah. Was like, mm-hmm. and then that was right before. <laughs> and that was right before the flashback. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of blend. It actually kind of worked to have both episodes in a row. Like they really blended together very oh, well. Com- mm-hmm. Oh yeah, completely sure. agree. And and I remember Taylor, you asked me if you were like, how does it feel different, um, binging it versus watching it episode mm-hmm. by episode? I gotta say, binging it was actually better just because there's so much to unpack. I feel like this show needs to be 40 to 60 minutes long, like period, because it has so many elements working on it. Just like, let's say a Game of Thrones where you get perspectives from 12 different characters. I feel like this is one of those shows that benefits the longer an episode is. So a double header actually felt perfect. Whereas in the past, especially this season, I felt like, man, 20 minutes just didn't give me enough uh, to satisfy my needs. I mean, that's the format we're stuck with until they change, change, change away from the broadcasting format. So, mm. I know, I know, yeah, but that's true. I don't see it ever changing though. Three movies, bro. Three movies. Twenty minutes, more episodes, more airtime, more money. Why do you ever true reduce that. the number of episodes? No, I'm not saying it's going to change. I'm just saying, like, from a viewing experience, it feels better just to, like stack. Oh no, episodes. yeah, I, I totally yeah. agree with that. I mean, that's why people. That's why a lot of people like. A good amount of people binge shows like they don't watch it weekly. Although, right. for Tag- it's something like Titan, it's so hard not to get spoiled. So hmm, that's true. Yeah, 
It took me a little while when we first started this podcast to get used to having, I've never watched anything weekly other than like, like, you know, like Western TV, like real people TV shows I would watch weekly. <laughs> real come real out. people TV show. Are you telling me that you're not real people? <laughs> Amy is real, damn it. <laughs> but, uh, and, and so it was really a pretty difficult adjustment for me at first. I'm kind of getting used to it, but I, I agree with you, Sasha. In general, if you can binge, you should binge, especially for this show. It's just too difficult. I feel like by the time an episode ends, it's just, it's been five minutes. Like, I'm literally shocked each time. Yep. Concurred. But, but then we go into, um, into Zeke's backstory. And okay, I'm going to eat my words here on this. I read I, I, really? I read the manga and I hated Zeke. I hate I hated Zeke. That has been that's been the company line from the beginning. But I have to admit, something about watching his backstory animated. You gotta feel seeing, for the guy. Seeing the little teardrops moving in his eyeballs. I, was I like, don't know. Okay. God I, damn it. I kind of feel a little bit empathetic towards him. Like kind I'm of. Like, dude, that's a sad ass childhood right there. I dude. know. Well, okay, the thing I always oh. clung to was how emotionless he was like when he came in the third season and he was just wiping everybody out like the that entire squad out not even the entire squad it was like basically all the scouts at that point he just didn't care at all like no feeling and i guess after years of training that kind of like you know you learn to be more like that but man just wanted to spend some quality time with his daddy and daddy was like nah we about to you know rise up and he's like dad i don't want to rise up though i just want to play catch and he's like nah fuck i want to be a baseball player dad i want to be a baseball player in the aot universe Yo, shout mm. out to whoever the voice actor for Aaron's dad is or Grisha. What, what, Grisha. Yeah, Grisha. Yeah, Grisha. Yep. Yeah. Because like every single scene was just like, ah, he's not a multi-billionaire yet. What? You're like, he's not the warrior <laughs> type. Dude, the, the best part is when he shows up to the, the training session and he sees Zeke like lagging behind and it just zooms in on his face and he's just like, <laughs> ah! And he just like runs off because he knows like how screwed he is because his his son is just worthless in his eyes. Like man, you that's know. that's the it's face like when said, you realize your son's a loser. That's that's rough, man. Right? That's that's a yeah, tough thing to cope with. And when you're I like, mean, you know, part of this room, you're like, don't worry, my son's like our our ace in the hole. And then I they mean, all look at his son and they're just like, Oh fuck. Like you talk about high show, expectations, like, dude. Yeah, fuck, like you're, you're, right. you're real. You're really- I know he's like royalty and all, but like you really gotta like put the fate of your race into like this this kid, dude. You have no idea what dude. his abilities were before yeah. he was. I mean, it's born. like it's like parents that are just like you're gonna be a doctor, and it's just like that's, that's the only way they see it. There, and it's being like, a doctor. I'm not, is I don't want to be a doctor, thing. or you know, I don't want to do. You know, yeah, I can see that, at least the the parallels to. That's a you doctor. Know, he's trying to like push their right, will on he's their trying kids. to become a revolutionary for an entire race. That's Dude, this is like the yeah. equivalent of like just randomly popping out a kid and and like literally telling that kid, "Hey, you're gonna be the next NFL superstar." It's like, yeah, bro, like you're not you're not living you for me? yourself. You're living for my own like endeavors, like because either I can't do it, and exactly in this sense, like Grisha can't, you know, be that savior or whatever. So just so it is just that curious. Is. Uh, just curious, and in the manga. Did they mm-hmm. specify why he had so much faith that Zeke could be a warrior, or why he was so special, oh, or I mean, was it was it just I like mean, high just, expectations? I mean, uh, part of the fact is that he's you know of royal blood. Yeah, that's really it. And I think that that Grish just thought was just like, you've got that part down. That's the hard part that nobody else can recreate. So uh-huh. you're just gonna train your butt off. And then you and, can you even know, think can further how big of a asshole Grisha is of you know with Dina Fritz. It's just like okay, you know, how much did he really love her versus how mm-hmm. much is you know in the back of his head of like, all right, I need royal blood. You got royal blood. Like, let's get this done. Obviously, it well, appears, you know, they share the similar. Page, yeah, exactly. So, you know, to give credit there, but. Hmm, okay. It's kind of a, it's kind yeah. of a, just an all around. Well, this is what Attack on Titan really excels at, right? Is that it's an all around like shitty decision, uh, at, uh, like for everybody. Like, I do believe that Grisha still has love for his son, but I think that he also is just so like his entire life really at this point is revolving around this revolution that he needs that son for and it's just yeah i mean Random i'm not saying i'm empathetic towards him but it's just like i i understand how it came to be you know random tangible whatever happened to armin's parents i'm sure that was like explained very early on but dude i don't think never, so i don't we don't remember we don't know yeah. or see them do we <laughs> no no yeah. so it's just like yo here's armin <laughs> don't i think believe he there was his, i believe there was like a uncle. mention of like an uh, yeah uncle at one okay. point yep. But yeah, the uncle gave like, him. Like he was book. like a merchant, right, Sasha? 
or something. Wait, um, and then his uh, uncle. Or that maybe why, and then that that's why he has like the books and stuff like that. Yeah. I just honestly couldn't remember. But thinking about like everybody yeah. in oh, the series and like was, what kind of families they have. It was the person who told him about the ocean, right? They're like beyond the walls. There's like yeah, an yeah. ocean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that his yeah, granddad? the book that he referenced. I don't know. Pretty sure that was his but... uncle. But... Yeah, some auxiliary family member, some, not even yeah. Some yeah. his direct some parents. Dude. So, anyways, back was... to you know the, the story of Zeke. I was just gonna say, like, I know this, like, this, yeah, the latest episode didn't paint Grisha in a good light. I'm just still like just trying to remember from season three, like, like mm-hmm. I mean, just how traumatized he was from his sister's death, mm-hmm. and just like. Ed, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I agree with Taylor. Like, he didn't do things the right way, but like, I still, I just still remember, like, yeah, season three when he was really trying hard to, to like, you know, work with 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 this with Diana and just like form the the restorationist and do all this. It's just, just that's that's how I still see Grisha, even though like, even though that this um this latest episode like didn't really yeah. Do me good. I mean, it's obviously unfortunate, like what happened to his sister, but to continue to push that on, you know, your offspring, like that's also, you know, equally as bad in its own regard. It's like, yeah, yeah he fucked up with Zeke, and then and then look back, you know, the season three when we actually learn like um, how Grisha, you know, killed the entire royal family, and then forces Aaron, like literally right after Reiner and Bertolt attack, you know, yeah, that's and transforms too. him in the I, forest. I, I, I it's forgot. Just like, thought... You know, that, yeah. No, no son or you know offspring of Grisha is having a good life. <laughs> They're all just tied up in the bullshit for you know, admittedly him wanting to make the change that he needed to see because of what happened to his sister. But again, okay. admittedly, the reason that his sister died was his fault. Oh, so, yeah, true. Well, but... okay, that's victim blaming a little bit though. I mean, they were kids, and they yes, yes. I mean, they're being oppressed, so it's not his fault. It's the Marleyans' fault for oppressing them. But I get, true, I hear what you're saying. True. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't blame him honestly because that guard he could have punished her in any way possible, but he chose, you know, to murder her brutally by having dogs yeah, have eat the her dogs body. Here. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's it's one of those things. You know, sometimes you get you know a little no dinner at the table and then sometimes you get your arms cut it's, off it's like the thing you know, of a, an eye for an eye you know makes the world go blind yeah it's like all right you have the eye of taking there and then now grish is gonna be like all right i'll do this here and then it's like when you step back and look at it it's like all right this is fucked <laughs> yeah and i gotta say sometimes you just live there's like this innate dna bound urge in human beings to just stick with whatever their instincts tell them even though if they know it's wrong so even though you know killing someone or getting vengeance won't solve a thing you just there's something in you that says I can't yeah do this. you can't you can't control it exactly <laughs> and that's how i feel about it Zeke. Away. like really good episode powerful stuff like i, I love the backstory i loved mr Kasava. like a really cool guy uh, might be one of my favorite side characters in the mm-hmm. whole show and oh i don't know about Zeke that reminds me what's that say you what people's that? opinions were on yeah i don't the know predecessing about beast titan like all that. in all i feel like it's it was actually dr cassava's fault that that all this happened to like grisha and his family in what way yeah how because yeah. he, he's well, one if, he told, you, if you think he about told, it right um he told grisha to Zeke, or, uh, Zeke report him to report him yeah so right well, yeah but they were already know, on his team happened, remember because he mm, walked by true. the room with the guards, and they're like, "We know yeah. these guys." So it was bound to happen. I feel yeah. like he just kind of pushed things, you know, a little bit earlier. Well, he I he mean, was protecting Zeke as much as he could, really. At the end of the day, right. But if you really think about it, like if it wasn't for his involvement and kind of uh, pushing Zeke to like tell on his parents, you know, maybe with by the time they actually found out who the the owl was, they could have possibly completed their plans and actually. Uh, you know, like performed the revolution and taking out the Marlians, or maybe yeah. you know by by Zeke like going with his parents to the to the island or whatever. Uh, maybe like there was a different turn of events that could have played out because didn't the owl eventually come to the island and save Grisha from being turned into a titan as well? So maybe different events could have been played out as well. So yeah, that's a, it's hey, a the, fair, yeah the thing fair with potentially. The- the thing with the island and the owl coming to save, I mean, that's really something you can't like. That was like such an outlier of a of an event happening. That's not something you could even really hope for or ever plan for. As for like the other thing though, like maybe maybe the revolution could have 
maybe they could have like gotten through with some more of these plans for the revolution before it had to come to that. But I think that was why they showed that scene, like why it showed those Marlian officers, you know, saying we found this information. Like we have, I don't remember exactly what they said, something like confirmed locations and stuff like that. I mean, it's not like they were like pretty hot on the, on their trail, you know? So like, mm, right. I don't really know that like I would fault either of them for the decision that they made. Like, I agree that it kind of seemed like probably the thing to do. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, I'm. And... Uh, I'll say, Sasha, I want to hear more about why you really enjoy um, Doctor Kasava's. Like, wh- why do you yeah. really enjoy the character? Um, I, I just like the fact that he was very empathetic towards Zeke, and that he saw potential in him when nobody else did. And I'm trust you, I'm not a big fan of Zeke at all. Like, even through this episode, I still think of him as my most hated wrestler. That I cannot like, even if this wrestler turns into what's called a baby face or a good guy. Triple H. He reminds me exactly of Triple H. He's the Triple H of the show. Like, no matter what he does, he's still a dirty heathen in my eyes. With that being <laughs> said, uh, Dr. Xava, right? Like, if you look at his story, he's the Beast Titan. So he only he has a limited amount of time left. He, uh, he has a brutal backstory involving his wife and his kid where basically, oh, hey, you're Eldian and I didn't know this the whole time. Well, I'm just going to take my life and the life of your son, which is absolutely brutal. He could have just committed suicide at that point himself, too, and nobody would have blinked an eye at him. Um, but he decided to live on, and he just gave the kid a shot. He's like, hey, you got a good throwing arm. You're pretty smart. Um, and you know what? I think you're in a really bad situation with your parents. Um, so he tried to step in as best as he could, in my opinion. Obviously, in hindsight, maybe not the greatest call, but um, I do like the fact that. You know, out of everybody, this one guy did step in and showed empathy toward someone who's completely shunned. Because I feel like you do need that in this world. Like, you need people like that who are willing to give, you know, the ones we turn a blind eye to a, a chance. So I uh, I sympathize with this character. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Gave him that choice. Yup. I mean, I basically Plus, agree with those what glasses. he said. Whereas... <laughs> those are, those, glasses. are those the same glasses that Zeke wears later? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. So. Yep. yeah. Yep. Is he gets he them after he eats them. Like, where the glasses were. Yeah. yeah. You know what the question, though? Plot hole? Does he have the same lenses? Like, how do you know, have the right? same vision as that guy? Uh, <laughs> Maybe when you inherit it, you get the same kind of vision or something as your predecessor. <laughs> there we go. Yes. No, <laughs> we we'll use that as our lens. convenient plot. <laughs> no, he popped up the lens. It's just a fashion statement now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like that better. <laughs> like those NBA players at press conferences. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, you wear glasses? Yeah. Nah, like, nah man, lens. I just like them for the drip. Oh, speaking yep. of uh, sports and NBA, Sasha, I have a question for you. Uh, so I was wondering if you can explain to me, right? Because I was looking up online and trying to thinking really hard about how this came to be. But why is there baseball and why is there like such a thing as baseball players in the AOT universe? Ooh. Why is there such a thing as baseball in the AOT universe? That's a really good question. <laughs> you know, like, why do they play sports? <laughs> this is a hole you don't want to go down, brother. <laughs> yep. Right. You know, because because you know, like AOT, they don't like just throw things in there, right? Everything has like significance, right? So, other than the fact that you know, with with Zeke passing the baseball over to Aaron, like when they were having a conversation, it's kind of like passing the torch. I just want to know what is the significance of baseball in this world. I, I was That's hoping maybe you really would have an idea. Question. Yeah. I'll be honest, you caught me out of caught me off guard. Like I just thought, oh yeah, it's just you know a regular sport they play in the 1940s World War II Jewish <laughs> internment camp. <laughs> okay, all right, true, true. Oh, that's a, that's a really good. I don't know. I'm you sitting here thinking, and I'm like, I don't know. Like I can see that there's like some. I get like looking at what like baseball represents. I can kind of see like maybe why Isayama chose that for Z. Um, like tying in with some themes from later on, but like from the future, from where we're at now, but like nothing really strong and certainly nothing that explains why, like why baseball exists in the first place in this world. Honestly, I think that he's just assuming, I mean, you know, they're, they're like mostly, they're not so far from us, you know, some time ago. I mean, we still had sports for a long time, so why can't they? Yeah, I, it's tough to say about whether or not sports is in their world or if it's similar because they obviously have like theatrics and same fashion style and everything. So there's potential for that. For me, I guess the the main reason why I was just like I didn't even like have a second thought about it was because 
it gives a uh, you know background and development to Zeke and his main attack, which is just crushing things and throwing them. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh okay, that's where he got that. Like physically, he's not the yeah. strongest fighter by any means. So what he does is he just uses this technique that uh, his old teacher or whatever you want to call it, mentor taught him, which is hey, throw the ball as hard as you can, A.K. Throw projectiles at opponents as the yeah. beast titan. It's one of those things that I don't think you'll ever really know until like you get words from the creator himself of like what came first? Was it the ability of, you know, this beast titan of, you know, throwing things like you said, Sasha? And then he was later like, okay, well, how am I gonna explain this? He's like, Oh, it's like baseball. Or did Zeke and Dr. Xaver's background come first? And then, you know, you can't really know True. for sure. So it could be one of those things where he's just like, All right, I gotta explain it somehow baseball works baseball is something that as a reader everybody understands yes it may not be the most realistic in the time period of you know where and when attack on titan takes place but gotta do what you gotta do or or maybe maybe the marlians were americans this whole time right because oh, america's hot. pastime <laughs> Dang, america's yeah. pastime that's even right? more fucked up <laughs> the, the world hates you everyone's gaining up on you like you know aka the u.s right yeah, man, it's like, it's like i almost saw things way far in advance man he called it <laughs> yeah i'm telling you guys and maybe the uh Actually, no, I'm not going to say it. That's too far. I think this is diving into conspiracy <laughs> right. theory. All right. I'm um, just saying, baseball, bigger significance than we think it is. And I thought that maybe like someone else would have thought about it as well, but I think I'm just blown it out of proportion. But it, it did trick me, so I had to ask everybody. Okay. So, Dude, that's um, a really good point, though. Honestly, I have not considered it, so I'll, I'll put some thought to it. <laughs> So I was gonna say, um, like this flashback with Zeke, because I I remember like this whole time I was so worried about uh about Aaron going on with Zeke's plan. I thought like I thought Aaron would like, get like like get manipulated or just like just um just just somehow like get like backstabbed by by Zeke later on. But then after this flashback, like it really just seemed it it just really made Zeke to me such such a weaker character than I thought. Like like when this whole when it revealed that like the whole thing was for the youth and Asian plan, that, that, like that's like that's like the big reveal. I'm like, and then you just ask Aaron to go along with it, and that's just it. I'm like, I don't know, just now. Now I feel, I feel like it's much more Aaron controlling the like, calling the shots now. Like I don't feel the big threat from Zeke that I, I feel like I did earlier in the season. Hmm. Hmm. I, would I, mean, agree. I think I kind of viewed as like Zeke has respect for Aaron in a way or he has no choice but to work with Aaron because he has the founding Titan and it's all just... these other Titans it's like Zeke just has the beast Titan and as we've seen like the beast Titan don't mean shit especially when you got Levi on you know the other yeah. the other team here well, so mm-hmm. it was because like before like there's it was such a like a mysterious mysterious vibe about Zeke for the longest time you didn't know anything about beast Titan and then even mm-hmm. like even his role in Marley too like and then and just i just like always have this bad feeling but now like it just feels like it just feels like yeah it's just like that facade is not there anymore like it just feels like yeah it's just no it it definitely is like a weak plot development of like really when you boil it down you can think of it of like besides the respect and endearment that zeke had for dr xavier it could just be that you know his dad wanted eldians to continue to reign supreme and you know not be oppressed anymore and what is the best way that z can get back at his father's ideologies kill the bloodline entirely so definitely adds to your point of like a, a weak kind of development of zeke as a character yeah like so so I, all this time i'll oh, go ahead sash i think weak is harsh for his character i think it makes sense like i didn't feel any less i i just think the change was so drastic from him being like, uh, I think Taylor was the one who said it where he's just like so heartless, so stoic and stolid. But then we see him like literally when he starts running from Levi <laughs> and yeah. you see that like, it puts, oh, no! he, puts up a, he puts up that tough front, but then you can even see that now as a kid, you know, he obviously yeah. wasn't the, the all-star that we know him to be or, but you know, the, the person get, that, yeah. Yeah. I get where David, where like your, your heart is at, like, you thought something more was coming of this, and it just feels, you know, was, a little less than spectacular. I thought he was like the big mastermind behind like everything, and now it's like, 
wow, like by my opinion, you just just dropped a lot, like or just I don't feel like this minute. I don't feel you as like this dangerous person anymore. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he's not as dangerous. I just think that his motives is is not as like menacing or as epic as I thought it would be. Like his driving factor. I mean, mm-hmm. if you look at his background, he he's kind of like a, a like a weak. Uh, you know, very emotional, unstable, and then he just happened to go to pick up this baseball from from some guy who happened to be the Beast Titan, and then by becoming his friend, he was able to become the Warrior. You know, hence continue his plans. So, his like he's still a mysterious and uh, like very smart guy, right? Like his yeah. plan is very dangerous, right? Just look at the just look at what he just did. You know, he was able to get like spinal fluid put in and wine, and he was able yeah. to get tons of these like high military officers. Like like under his fingers just by yelling, and apparently there's like a radius. So if you're not too close, like you're not gonna transform. But like this guy is very dangerous. But I guess like I guess if like, you want to compare him to Thanos, he's he's kind of weak. You know, oh, like well, in I mean, terms of villain. I wasn't gonna compare him to Thanos. I mean, Where I guess like Thanos compared, coming. I mean, I guess compared to Aaron, like I'm much more confident in Aaron, like being able to like having more control of the situation now. Although like I am kind of worried that like things are kind of like they're kind of like too good to be true like it seems like things i don't know it seems like things are going kind of too well for like, aaron and the Agris. like i i just feel like an aot something Never. else is gonna happen <laughs> well the season's mm. not over yet rest. yeah i know like i'm so, yeah I'm like, i feel like, like oh god go ahead sash <laughs> Nah, i was just gonna bring it back to zeke and be like a lot of the villains and you know, the antagonists and stories, they have these hard outer shells, but deep inside, they're fairly insecure about one thing or another, which has led them down that path. And so mm-hmm. Zeke's story to me kind of fits with his character. I just think it's just, it's just so shocking that it's taking me some time for it to settle in. But it kind of reminds me of um, with Steve Jobs, right? Like renowned businessman, genius when it comes to hardware in his company but then like on his deathbed um his his daughter was saying he's like hey i owe you like i'm so sorry i owe you right so it showed he really probably should have spent more time with his family and raising his dog and being with his wife etc etc but that was all strained for the cost of his goals and his ideals and for me that's kind of what happened with zeke like we see this scared little boy that you know, all he ever wanted was some time with his dad, was to impress his dad, and he, he never had that chance. And so, you know, to Justin's point, it's like, I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to be a contrarian then, and I'm going to ruin that entire plan that he had and show him what he missed out on. Um, which brings us to the end of the episode, right, where he's sitting there, and who does he think of? He doesn't think of his dad. He doesn't think of his mom. thinks of Mr. Ksava! And then... <laughs> Yo, is he dead? That horse, PETA is going to call this company and be like, hey, listen, if that <laughs> horse is actually burned. That was traumatic to watch. Like, I, seriously, that that hurt a lot. Wait, the horse the part? Horse? Yeah, the horse part. Like, okay. they, they, they spent I... so long animating that poor horse in pain. Why? So, uh, I thought you were horsing around, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, that's it for tonight, everybody. To do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh <laughs> what have we become? God damn it. <laughs> okay, so Zeke, is he dead? And uh, and Levi, is he dead? What do you guys I think? Know. I can't I hope I... Levi's dead. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, don't know. I just feel like people. <laughs> I just feel like he's too strong of a character, you know? Like he's like the hidden OP and the ultimate counter to everything. So it's like mm. like if he's not I mean, dead, he's gone through a lot of pretty horrible things despite Levi. <laughs> I would say no. that the few characters that are alive might be alive in large part due to him, but he's lost a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's, I, uh, he's not I as can't. strong as you think he is, sir. He's did not you, old, man. Did this you man took out OVAs, Brian, Titans no? in like two seconds. That's pretty OP if you ask me. Um, Brian, did you watch? Did you watch the OVAs? No, never. Oh, uh, you should watch the OVAs to learn Levi's origin. Yeah, yeah, it, it really canon. gives some context. Yeah, and it's canon. Mm-hmm. 
But um, I can't see Levi okay. dying, so I I don't know about Zeke. I just have a feeling he's just gonna live because I can't see him dying either. I just feel like he's they just him and Aaron's gotta meet. Like that's gotta happen. Yeah, Topic I two, feel like what do you think? You guys really think the main villain and the main badass is gonna die from one bomb? I hope so. Nah, <laughs> nah. Fire force. You, sir, <laughs> you, sir, haven't been paying attention, all right? There's no way in hell they're going to die from this. Come on. This now. is the Gurren Logan of Attack on Titan. <laughs> yes, yes. What he we, said. we know what's going to happen, though. Levi's going to lose his legs, 100%. Because remember, in the OVA, they referred to like him not having the greatest bone density because he lived underground for so long. So yeah. watch. He's going to be disfigured or something. He's going to be like Captain Levi with like an eye patch. And a hook for an arm. Like, ah, yeah, yeah in my day. <laughs> he just happened to <laughs> age Ultimate like Captain, 30 dude. years as well. <laughs> and then oh, Zeke, Lord. I feel like Zalik, Zeke, Zalik, Zeke's uh, little spaghetti, bo- uh, spaghetti, spaghetti body is going to be laying on the floor like, help me, help me. And then all of a sudden we'll see Aaron's hand cut open. And then, it's oh, a oh, <laughs> Good oh, reference. God. Yeah. Is that bone yeah. Yeah. real? Wait, what? Yeah, it's it's uh, something about like it's just like a really weird thing. Basically, it's like, oh my god, this guy's bone density, and just kind of throw it in there. Oh no, it's canon. Oh yeah, yeah. oh it's canon from the OVAs as well. You should watch it. I know, Trent. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't know how I missed those. Yeah, I don't know either. When it comes from Sasha, you know, it's kind of hard to tell if he's telling the truth or not. You know, so I I don't blame Trent. I mean, to be fair, bone density sounds like something that Sasha would throw out there in spite of infinite. (laughs) <laughs> you guys, you guys, I'm really sorry. This is super off topic, but there's some sort of like Attack on Titan game that's out there or something, and I've been seeing images. I think it's a newer one, and there's been some images that I've seen floating Ta- around Ta- of the, the fir- character, the the console, like the. the it the could console. be. Ta- Ta- I don't. Titans, I don't the... play anime games, so I, okay. I haven't paid any attention. Yeah, there's there's two Attack like, on Titan games. The character models for Erwin and Levi, like it has them sitting at this table, and like Levi's eyes are barely above the table, and Erwin's just like towering <laughs> over. Like he literally <laughs> looks like a toddler. <laughs> and I was like, oh, if these Lord. people were real, somebody would be dead by now for yeah. making that decision. Uh, well designed. Yeah. Also, real quick, why do you uh, gotta just... do Levi like that, bro? That's fucked up. Uh, I mean, the F's man scene. is five three, oh. so or whatever he is. Yeah. <laughs> Levi's like, uh... five three. Excuse yeah. me. Dude, That's also oh. because of Dude, like the. Sorry, industry. Sorry, deficiency and stuff. No, no, the bone say, density. Um, right, Tiz- right. Tizzle and Chad was asking, are the OVAs covering the manga? Prob- probably. Uh, I didn't read. I didn't read them because I started the manga after. They, they the were their own separate, um, like set of novels, Spin- it's like spinoffs. Okay. But they're still, oh. but they're still no, they're still canon. It's just canon? separate. Okay. It wasn't in the main like series. Okay. You just had to buy. Just like, tell oh, Tizzle longer. that the Levi ones are the only ones that are canon. I think there's one where like they go hunting for a boar. That's just ridiculous. Don't watch that one, Tizzle. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. But um so, so let's I'm, see. Did... I'm still ahead, waiting. David. Like I'm still waiting for um for Peak and the other Malian um like soldiers to show up because like we had that one episode way back before like way before like yep. Aaron broke out of jail where like you know we had they showed Peak, like, you know, she's 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 in Paradise. So and I thought I thought we were gonna like get like some like some big thing happening where they just, they they sabotage something or or like set up some explosion whatever but nothing's happened so far so I'm still waiting like like that's like the one thing like I'm worried like that could backfire on Aaron that he didn't like he didn't um like plan for. I, I Dude, still want uh, a a final bout between Reiner and Aaron like next episode it's gotta happen right that's that's what I'm like waiting for. My money. I'm telling you guys, Reiner, Aaron, they look like they're going to fight, and they shake hands. Tag team, <laughs> I'm telling you. It's it's going to happen. Um, and Peek, just random thought about her. I, I always thought, like, man, this girl reminds me of someone. I don't know who, right? Because you, you can't think of any girls that crawl on their arms and legs and just walk around like a cockroach in your household. But <laughs> she reminds me of the girl from The Ring. You know, the one that crawls out of the well? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my the God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, Sucks that's why I never though. trusted her. Like, watch, she's gonna show up on the next episode, and be like seven days. <laughs> girl, what's up? Get out of here! You didn't oh, pay your bills. <laughs> Somebody throw a bucket of water on this girl. Get that janitor from the last episode. 
Oh my god. That's a teeth cut, man. Sasha, this is why it's hard to listen to what you say sometimes. Uh, Hey, man. Hey, man. I got you, bro. Strokes of brilliance. Strokes of brilliance. (laughs) Well, next episode is the last one of the season, right? Yep. Oh Uh, my gosh. Don't say that out loud. Speak it into (laughs) it. It's over, man. (laughs) I really anime really anime that... only are screwed. It's not getting it's not coming back for another like two years. Yeah, you guys are so what fun. will you do? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> if it if it's six months, I got you. And it's another season of like twelve episodes, I'm in. But if it's a movie, I'm out. I'm gonna break and go to the manga. That's fair. Really? Yeah, hmm. it just depends what Mappa was Dude, doing. Look at Did Demon Slayer ahead I... or not. <laughs> Surely they're gonna have an announcement at the end of the next episode, right? Surely. Let's hope so. That would be the biggest blue balls ever if they're just like nothing. <laughs> oh my like, god! Just I a can't g- even generic imagine. to be continued. You would... was it about Demon Slayer? Huh? No, I'm just saying. Like, Sasha was gonna say something. About, yeah. Oh right, right, right. Right, first season came out. Was it 2019 or 2020? 2019. 2019. Definitely not 20. Yeah. Okay. It's 19. So 2019, right? First season covers, you know. A decent amount from the manga, and then the next arc is literally covered within one movie that takes all of two years to finally get fleshed through before we get uh, the follow-up season. I I can't wait that long for Attack on Titan. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> hmm. I feel like you if can, it's a movie, if you think, well, actually, I forget that you didn't wait for the gap between season one and season two for Attack on Titan. That was four nah, years. Bro. I think it was five yeah, years. At least, the, at least years. that wasn't right near uh, like just the I climax, think it was five years. You know what I mean? It was five years. Yeah, I think. Yes, yeah. good call. I did wait two years for Game of Thrones when they had that little thing, but that obviously didn't pay off. So, um, <laughs> yeah. We'll just keep waiting for the book, Sasha. <laughs> I think. Oh, totally. <laughs> I think because um uh because there's such a, a big deal about like passing out the studios from Wit to to Mappa, I think that they understand like that they. Like the importance of finishing finishing the final, like so. I think they'll have you know, hope so. an announcement ready. So, I think it would just be kind of decent for them to at least put something out within the next year for people who like have come this far. For people who are anime only who haven't wanted to read the manga for whatever reason, because there's lots of reasons people would choose to watch as opposed to reading the manga. Um, it would just really suck for them if they were if it seemed like it was gonna be like a two three year wait. Well, and it would suck for manga readers too because like we want to talk with people about it as well. So mm-hmm. it would just be a bad situation for everyone. Inevitably, people are gonna get spoiled on stuff I mean, like stuff like that. That's that's much that's more about um like project management and like how yeah. they schedule things more than like whether or not they want to or something. So yeah, I suppose it Most would just lose all its pressed. momentum. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it I mean, does like the same yeah. thing between one and season one and two, it it's not gonna end well for Attack on Titan. It's literally gonna drop. Yeah. I mean, like it should have happened because there's no like excuse for not having six. enough content. And as close as we yeah. are, there's only yeah. like 22 yeah. more chapters but after the thing where that's... this finale is probably gonna end. Yeah, but that's a problem with the anime Ooh. industry in general. Is that like, yeah, it's like stuff like this, like does it does happen, <laughs> and like you, and you, you you think like like you know it's no brainer. But, but like it does happen where, where they, they do yeah. lose momentum. I mean, it comes down to planning and what MAPPA signed up for in terms of like shows that they're producing. So it's like from the get go, did they tell them, hey, we want you to animate the whole thing, you know, fully to with the manga coming up? Or they're like, OK, hey, we're going to do the 16 episodes because Wit didn't want to do it because they were, you know, preoccupied. And then to your point, David, like because they're it does di- happen, like <laughs> because their animators were literally dying trying to make AOT. Yeah. And it's like they've got shows coming up the next few seasons as well. It's not like they're, you know, scrounging for work. Yeah, are they doing uh, Chainsaw, Chainsaw Man, Man stuff too? Yep. Oh my god, they really do have a lot on their plate. Mm. Well, Chainsaw Man. And it's the I thing too where it's like at this point would you feel like it has to be MAPPA that finishes it, right? Like it can't no, go to any no. other studio. Or I don't, it can't go. I don't, it's not going to go back to WIT by any stretch no, of the imagination. No, it's not going but, back to WIT. Like I, I don't think they would have like, I don't think they would have made this like arrangement if it wasn't like if they didn't feel that mappa would have um com- committed to done everything it. yeah for sure yeah yeah in in all sincerity if for whatever reason they can't go back to wit and mappa hasn't got it mopped out then i really really hope they reach out 
to the studio that did the anime original ending to Promised Neverland, and they take over. <laughs> I would works. trust in their hands. Cold works, man. Cold works is legit. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, they're legit. They just—I uh, don't know what deal with the devil they signed to. That's, that's something else. To do what they've done with Promise Neverland. <laughs> I, but I, so I would lo- trust it in their hands. They could do the final oh. fight. Nah, man, it's gonna oh go to JC staff. Oh my god! Don't even say the word. Stren's favorite. Yo, T deserves it. No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. Wow, wow, Stretton. Oh. You know, everybody just who's listening, I hope you know Stretton is a very critical fan. He loves the show, but he's, he's definitely not a fan of season four. Yes, mm, right. That's why right. he's been silent <laughs> this whole time. All yeah, goes, I'm, not, I'm not even going to lie. For everything up to now. <laughs> I, I read some article. Uh, I don't know where it's from. It popped up on Facebook randomly. They talked about the final season and what's going to happen. And most likely, they're saying because the manga is wrapping up in a month, that that's going to give them enough time to finish the season as they like. And then in six months' time, we should get a second half to it. And I scroll down, and the very first comment is. Is it just me or is season four the worst season of AOT? And the next person was like, yeah, like they had no idea what to do. But then again, the manga wasn't even that good to begin with. And I'm just like, who are you people? Where do you come from? Like, <laughs> I mean, geez. your first, your first problem is reading Facebook comments. So, Oh, jeez. Listen, sure that, that's, that's a good point. That to trigger others. Like, I, I don't really know anybody that would sit there and say, oh, yeah, the manga is just not that good. Either you didn't understand it or you're just triggering people. There are actually a lot of people who said that the season one AOT was overrated. I remember that way back. You know what? I can kind of give that to people just because just because there was not they didn't have all this depth. They didn't have all this political like maneuvering and stuff like that. So for people who wanted action and good fighting scenes and and whatnot, like there was definitely that people who want shock factor. There's that. But Mm. I think that like the second and third seasons just brought in like a a much larger group. Season one was a huge huge moment so yeah mm-hmm. you always get those people mm-hmm. so yeah yes. do we have anything else to talk about from the episode um we covered uh, I, it? I, I, I just i didn't I, the only thing i want to reiterate is that like um i guess i yeah i don't believe that aaron is like he doesn't believe in the 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 euthanasia plan at all i don't know what what his goal is but it's definitely not following zeke's so I'm I'm more confident Aaron, but I'm still worried that something wrong something like something go wrong like it always does in AOT. So and still waiting still waiting for so still, still waiting for the Marlian soldiers to fuck everything up for them. All I can say is a uh, shout out to the young version of uh, Macbeth. That's the only thing we didn't cover. That man's been training oh, warrior cadets for eons it? down here. Oh, I was yeah, gonna yeah, say yeah. did he even did he even do anything besides just his job basically for yo. I... I thought that he was Shadis. Well, <laughs> oh. I'm not talking about Shadis. I was talking about the Marleyan. I know, I know, but I thought that was Shadis. I was so confused by that when I saw him. I'm like, yo, what's Shadis doing on the other side? Oh, of the wall? Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, man, that guy was rogue agent. He's he just can't yeah. get enough of training. Yeah, he has rogue agent soldiers. Yes, yes. Right, well, I set my piece. Anyone have any final words? Final uh... words. Um... Product placement. I got a great idea for Isayama. Uh, holla at your boy, man. After this, you should release your own line of cereal called Sasage Oats. And just, you know. <laughs> that sounds that's nasty, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's like Sasage Oats with sauce. <laughs> it's that perfect, like, spicy, sweet flavor. That's what we're trying. Why is it Why do you have the word sauce in the, in the <laughs> cereal? Dude, Sasage Oats. They're great. Yeah. <laughs> Someone oh, just pulled a bomb out. <laughs> Room. All, right. All I got to say is if they come out with another season and they call it Final Season Part 2, I will not be watching it. Okay. That's bad. Right. That's a lie. Wait, wait, wait. I will All not right. be watching it. We'll see you later right, then, Koo. Yeah, I'm All saying right. right here, right now. <laughs> if you see Final Season Part 2 officially announced, I'm done. Oh, yeah. Me All too, right. Koo. I'm right there with you. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what, what if they call it like ultimate final last season you like how japanese marketing takes english and just butchers it the the name better better be so epic that that (laughs) it blows me away and then i'll come back to the mix part that yeah that title sasha had that i mean that 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 would blow me away (laughs) okay if if that becomes the title i will watch the show nice okay we're in so tell me they just need to have a conversation with square enix yeah, we just have to make it happen. <laughs> the most diluted name they can think of. 
So I'll make that deal with you to watch the show as long as you eat a bowl of sasage oats afterwards. Thank you. <laughs> you make it happen. I got you. All right. Me, me oh, real you may have some fluids. spinal fluid in that yes. cereal. <laughs> yes, that's going to be nasty. Lower bone density. Oh, Lord. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. And that's, that's our right. final word. So. <laughs> Tizzy, so. class Ulysses, shout out to you guys. Good luck on your midterms if they already happened. Yeah. So that's going to be Damn. for us for this week for Society Girl Sundays. We'll see you for the final episode next week. Bye, everyone. Sounds good. Bye. 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 Believe in me who believes in you. I will. Oh, dude. Not, not working from home, but. You know what the sad thing is, Brian? That quote, I thought this whole time was from Naruto. And then I went back and saw it was from Taking <laughs> Tampa Kurt Logan. Oh, yeah. How you wow. can Naruto like that? Wow. What a fake fan. <laughs> man, you guys are messed up. Oh, man. That's up. <laughs> oh, man. When you really we're think at... you know a guy, then you drop shit like Sasha, we have to beat you until you can't stand up anymore. <laughs> That's fair. All right, that that is fair. What is that from? Attack on Titan. The recent episode, Attack on Titan. Oh, it's it's just their way of you know initiating. Oh yes. Into the cult. <laughs> it that's conflict mm-hmm. management. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we need to do in the business hey, world. Hey, you, 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 Very you call, therapeutic, yeah. Th- hey, you call it revolution, <laughs> I call it a cult. <laughs>